My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another beautiful episode of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at inductors and inductors. In the previous and the last two episodes, I explained that if you have a wire and you want it like this to form a coil, that is an inductor. Inductors are very, very important when it comes to physics and when it comes to electromagnetic induction. In fact, inductors is so important that without it, you may not be able to start your bike or even start your generator. Why? When you want to start your generator or bike for the first time in a while, you choke it. They will say there is one thing, bring it back. That is choke. After starting, you return it. Then it starts. What does choke do? Your generator or bike make use of fear. When working, there is what we call combustion or burning. It requires appropriate air and fuel or fear mixture to be able to work properly. Since you are starting for the first time in a while or cold starting, when you choke, it allows for a lot of fuel to enter in the system and also air mixture. As such, it's able to start at the first time. When you start a gen for the first time, it produces more power than when it's already running because it has to spin very fast to be able to maintain or get a particular revolution of the coil. You see the coil spinning to generate EMF. Remember, when there is relative motion between a conductor and the magnetic field, EMF is induced. And in, if current is not flowing, EMF is the same thing as potential difference or voltage. Now, inductors, capacitors, and resistors can offer opposition to the flow of current in a circuit. In fact, in AC circuit, you saw a place where I thought I taught ROLC circuit. I said in one circuit, you can have resistors, inductors represented by L and capacitors. If inductors, capacitors and resistors are offering opposition to the flow of current, that is referred to as impedance. Impedance. So, what is then the simple explanation for inductors or inductance? Inductance is the property of a material to oppose changes in current to it. So they can oppose the flow of current or the change in current that is flowing through it. If this is a coil, the rate of change of current flowing in this coil produces EMF or voltage. The rate of change of current flowing in the coil will produce EMF or you say voltage. If the rate of change of this current in this coil produces voltage or EMF in this same coil, we say that that is self-inductance. Self-inductance. And the formula for self-inductance is L is equals N plus over I, N plus over current. Now, there is a situation where you have two inductors like this. If the rate of change of current in inductor 1 or inductor A produces voltage in the second inductor instead of the first inductor itself, this is referred to as mutual inductance. 
So mutual inductance has to do with two inductors. And your transformer works on the principle of mutual inductance. This is a jam question. So for mutual inductance, it is represented by M and M is equals K root L1, L2. And K is the mutual coupling between them. So we know that self inductance takes place in only one inductor and mutual inductance is between two inductors. What are the factors that affect increase self inductance and what are the factors that affect mutual inductance? They are here. The factors affecting self inductance are the number of tones. In fact, for self inductance, this is the formula L is equals N square A mu over L. N is number of tones, A is area. This is permissivity of the curve, and this is length. No, yeah. If the permittivity of the curve is bigger, the inductance will be more. This is what I'm trying to say. Iron core will be have more inductance or self inductance than air, air core, because the permittivity or the permeability of the iron core is more than that of the air. It is thicker. So the thicker the permittivity, the more the self inductance. Area of the coil. Self inductance is proportional to area of the coil. As the area increases, the self inductance will increase. The number of tones affect self inductance. So in summary, the factors affecting self inductance are number of tones, area of the coils, and permeability, and they all increase self inductance. When it comes to mutual inductance, the factors affecting mutual inductance are nearness of the coil. You know, we have two coils for there to be mutual inductance. If the coils are closely placed, mutual inductance will increase. If they are far, there will be less mutual inductance. Now, medium between the coil affects mutual inductance. Are you separating them by air, ion, or something else? So what medium is between the two coils? And finally, number of tones also affects mutual inductance and area affects mutual inductance. Let's say the factors affecting self-inductance they can also affect mutual inductance. But in addition, nearness of the coils and the medium between the two coils add to mutual inductance. Inductance or inductors can be arranged in series and in parallel. Once you are arranging inductors in series, just add them. Say inductor 1 plus inductor 2. Now look at this. In some cases, they will give you Mutual coupling. Most times, you will not be given mutual uh, coupling. So, if you are given two inductors and they say take the mutual coupling to be this, the total inductance in series, like this, they are together, will be the first inductor plus the second inductor, then plus or minus two times the mutual coupling you are given. If they are in the same direction, according to the question, you add. If they are in different direction, you subtract the mutual coupling. But most time, this is just enough. In series, just add them. Then in parallel, you solve them the way you solve resistors in parallel. If you are given two inductors to resolve in parallel, just look for product over sum. Add, uh, multiply the two over add the two. That is your inductor in parallel. L1 times L2, that is product over sum. At the top, you subtract the sphere of the mutual coupling. At the bottom, plus or minus 2 times mutual coupling. If, the mutual, if they are in the same direction, according to the equation, you add. In different direction, you subtract. But for many questions I've seen in JAM, you need not use mutual coupling. I'm preparing you for the worst, so that something very simple will not make you to feel JAM. In summary, for series, L is equals L1 plus L2. For parallel, 
L is equals L1, L2, over L1 plus L2. Now, energy can be stored in inductor, just like we have in capacitors. And only half of the energy supplied by the inductor is stored. The energy stored in inductor is drawn from the battery. And energy is stored as work is done against the back EMF as current rises to its highest level. So, energy stored in inductor E is equals half Li squared. Inductor, the current squared. It is very, very easy. Then, applications of inductors are choke, varying current, storing and transferring energy in power converters, then impedance matching. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, we come to the end of electromagnetic induction and stories under electromagnetic induction. From the next episode, we shall start calculating, answering and solving questions under electromagnetic induction. Questions under inductance, under transformers and many other parts you should know so long electromagnetic induction is concerned. So get the Flash Learner Jam app, it is not too late, it's going to help you. Then subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out any videos. Tell your friends and everyone around about the Flash Learner's YouTube channel. See you in the next episode.